It's so wonderful to see all of you this Christmas Eve. And I would especially like to welcome anyone who's here for the first time or anyone who hasn't been with us for a while. I'd also like to welcome especially all the kids who are in this room tonight. You are my angels and my shepherds. And in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you what that means and how you're going to help me tonight. But first, I want to start off by asking a question for everyone. Here's the question. If you could be anyone in the world, who would you be? Now, this could be anybody real or pretend. If you could be anyone in the world, who would you want to be? Now, think about that for a minute, and then turn to your neighbor and share with them your answer. Now, if someone had asked me that question when I was little, this would have been my answer. How many of you know who this is? This is Scrooge McDuck. He's a Disney character, and he was so rich that he had a vault full of money, and, that, and he could actually go swimming in it. And that seemed really cool to me. I want to be that rich. Now, I wish I had a magic wand and that I could answer or grant all of your requests. But we know that this is question for pretend, and we, I couldn't really actually magically help you transform into somebody else. But there is one um, who, who really had that choice. When God came into the world, he had the power to choose. And instead of choosing power and riches, he chose to come into the world as a helpless baby to completely normal, ordinary people. Now, when we think of this, it seems a little strange, right? Because as much as we love to be who we are, sometimes we like to imagine how great it would be to be someone else. Now, I know for me, when I was growing up, there were um, there were some times when I, I, when I thought it would be great to be someone else, and this happened especially when I felt like I wasn't good enough. Now, I have a pretty clear memory of a time when I was in elementary, elementary school. It was time for PE, and we had all gone out onto the field. My fourth grade teacher had explained to us once again what, how to play the game of softball, and even though we had played it a couple times before, I realized that I wasn't a very good player, so here we are, we're going out on the field, and the teacher um, had assigned two people to be team captains, and they could choose anyone that they wanted to be on their team. And so as we were all standing there, waving our hands, you know, trying to get picked, um, I felt my heart beating faster because I really wanted to be picked. I knew I wouldn't be the first person to be picked because that would probably go to someone who actually knew how to play, but I just didn't want to be the last. But as I stood there and more and more kids got picked, the more and more my heart started to sink. And then finally, I was the last person standing there. And I just felt so hot with embarrassment because everyone else had a team. Everyone had a place to belong except for me. To be the last one picked sent a very clear message. I wasn't picked because I wasn't good enough. Now, as I share my story, maybe some of you can remember a time when you felt the same way. By a show of hands, how many of you had an experience like that? Yeah, just about everyone has had a moment like that. And tonight, I want to tell you, especially all the kids in the room, that even when you're not chosen and others think that you're not good enough, God chooses you. You are enough. And that brings us to the big idea for tonight, the, the one idea that I want you to remember. Jesus came into the world in a humble, ordinary way and chose to announce his coming to humble, ordinary people to show us that he chooses us. Now, we're going to spend a few minutes reading and thinking about the night that Jesus came into the world. But first, show me with your hands, where are my shepherds? Where are my shepherds? All right. Now, where are my angels? All right, now I'm going to need your help. I'm going to tell the Christmas story, and then I'm going to talk about it for a little bit. And every time I say the word shepherd, all the shepherds, I want you to say, let's go see. And every time I say angel, all of you angels out there, can you say glory to God? OK, so let's practice. Shepherds. Let's go. Okay, let's try that again, a little bit louder. You can say it as loud as you want, okay? 
shepherds. Let's go see. All right, that sounds good. How about angels? angels. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Angels. Glory to God. All right, that sounds good. Now I think that we're ready. Here we go. Now listen carefully. In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. Everyone went to their own town to be listed. So Joseph went also. He went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. This is where Bethlehem, the town of David, was. Joseph went there because he belonged to the family line of David. He went there with Mary to be listed. Mary was engaged to him. She was expecting a baby. While Joseph and Mary were there, the time came for the child to be born. She gave birth to her first baby. It was a boy. She wrapped him in large strips of cloth, then she placed him in a manger. That's because there was no room, guest room where they could stay. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel Oh, that was very good. Of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. Oh, sorry, I missed that. <laughs> it will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God. They said, may glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. The angels left and went into heaven. Then the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in the manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. They reported what the angel had said about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds <laughs> said to them. Great job, everyone. <laughs> now, the Bible tells us that Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem to be counted in a census, and they went there because that was where Joseph's family was from. So their plan was to go stay with some family members, but since everyone else was traveling, there were no guest rooms available. So just so that we're on the same page, here is what uh, a house in the first century looked like. Um, if you were to go up the roof and you were to look down into it, most families lived in a home where there was just one very large room, and that's where everything happened. That's where everybody ate, that's where everybody slept, and that's where they all did life together. And under that same roof, there was an area that was a little bit lower, and that's where the animals slept. And then on the other side of the house, that's where the guest rooms were. When there were no guests there, that room was used as storage. So here's a picture of what the guest room looked like. And so when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, none of their relatives had any guest rooms available. So most likely, they stayed in the living room with the rest of the family, and so they didn't have any privacy. Um, but then the time came for Mary to have her baby, and so she had the baby right there in the living room. And since the mangers, which are the feeding troughs where the animals ate, were right there, that's where she put Jesus. So the scene here is something that's kind of normal. Jesus was no born in a normal and ordinary way. He wasn't born out in the middle of nowhere, and he wasn't born in a palace filled with gold either. He was born in a house among family, just like all the other peasants in the first century. This reminds us that Jesus came as one of us. He is just like you, and he's just like me. Now, new babies arriving is a pretty ordinary thing. But at the same time, new babies arriving is also a pretty extraordinary thing, especially when this is happening to you or to someone you know. I know that's how it was for me. After nine months of waiting, battling morning sickness, the, the day when the baby arrived, I was just so excited. I couldn't wait to tell everyone. 
Now, many parents feel the same way, and they have a plan on how they're going to make that birth announcement. So they're, they're going to put out all these pictures, they're going to send it to their friends. Or maybe their plan is that they're going to post it on social media or send an email to all their friends to announce that their baby has arrived. Whatever it was, there was a plan. But before that happens, every new parent also has a short VIP list, the very important people. And that list includes the new grandparents, the new aunts and uncles, and also the parents' very best friends. It's the people who are closest to them, the most special, and the most important. Now, when Jesus was born, God also had a plan. He had a very special plan on how he was going to make his birth announcement. And it wasn't just going to be an email blast. God's plan was to send angels. Angels? Angels, anyway? Yeah. <laughs> Good job. So his plan was to send angels. And, um, and who was it that he was going to send the angels to? Let's read it, look at it again. There were shepherds Yay! living out in the fields nearby. So God's plan was to send not just one angel, but a whole crowd of angels to shepherds. Now this was actually a very unexpected choice. Now the reason why it was an unexpected choice because, is because that the shepherds were not rich. They were just normal, everyday laborers. They were also not very popular. Because their job was to watch sheep, they lived outside and they lived among the sheep. And so they were kind of smelly and people just didn't want to be around them. Another reason why they were an unexpected choice is because they weren't trusted. People thought that shepherds were thieves. They stole things, and so their word wasn't even trusted. In the courts, they weren't, their word, their testimony, was not even seen as valid. So imagine what it was like to be them, to be someone that no one wanted to be around, to be seen as different from everyone else, to not be believed or trusted for no reason at all. The shepherds... <laughs> were rejected, and I'll bet that every day they woke up, they felt that heaviness of their rejection. Now, when I think about the shepherds, I can under totally understand how they felt. Now, for many years, I walked around with this heaviness, this feeling of heaviness of rejection. I felt like I was a reject. And the reason is because when I was born, I was born with a birth defect called a cleft palate. Now, a cleft palate is when uh, a baby is in the mother's womb and the lip and the mouth doesn't form correctly. And so because of this, I always felt like I was different. I always felt like I was ugly. And this was confirmed for me when I was in middle school. I was on the bus. I was getting up to, to get off the bus. And two of the boys saw me, and uh, they started making fun of me. And I can't remember exactly what they said, but it has something to do with, oh, I have a crooked nose or I have a crooked teeth. And I just felt so hurt that I just wanted the floor to open up and to swallow me up so that I could disappear. And from that moment on, and every day afterwards, all the way up until the middle of college, every single day, I said to myself, I am ugly. I am not worth being loved. I will never be chosen. I think this is how the shepherds felt. <laughs> so imagine what it was like for them to have the angels appear to them with the greatest news that has ever been reported in the history of the world. Imagine what it was like for them to have the angels who had stood in the presence of God come before them, a group of rejects, out in the middle of nowhere. They were chosen by God to be the very first witnesses to hear the news about the Savior of the world. What this teaches us is that God sees things differently than how we see things. 
God measures value and importance differently than how we measure value and importance. Now, we look at people and we decide whether they are important or valuable based on how much education they have, how much money they have, if they look good, if they're doing all the right things. And we walk around thinking that other people measure us in that same way. And if everyone's measuring us in the same way, we realize, we recognize, hey, we don't measure up. And so we feel like we have to hide our true selves. We think that, hey, if people really saw and really knew us for who we really are, then they're going to reject us. But in choosing the shepherds, good job, buddy. <laughs> in choosing the shepherds, God shows us that he knows us for who we truly are. He knows all the ways that we have messed up. He knows all the ways that we don't measure up, and he doesn't reject us. He loves us. He loves us with a love that's so great that he reaches out to us by giving us his son. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Having Jesus as our Savior means that he's going to take away our sin, our guilt, and our shame, and he's going to replace it with peace. Now, the angels, when they appeared, they announced peace on earth will come because of Jesus. The word peace here doesn't mean the absence of conflict, no more fighting. That's not what, all that it means. The peace that we receive from Jesus is a state when everything is as it should be. I'm going to say that again. The peace that we receive from Jesus is a state when everything is as it should be. Now, in our hearts, we know how things should be. We know that we should have peace between us and God. We know that we should have peace between us and everybody else. We know that we should experience wholeness instead of brokenness inside. And that is what God wants for us. That is why he came. But here's the thing. When the angels left, the shepherds had a decision to make. Good job, buddy. They had to decide if they were going to accept this good news. Is it real? Is it really for me? Now, they could have decided to just stay where they were. It was a risk for them to leave that hillside and go see for themselves. But they went. Then the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. They reported what the angel had said about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So the shepherds went and they saw Jesus, and their lives were changed. As a result, they told others, and others' lives were changed. Now, the story of the shepherds challenges us. The Savior has been born to us, but we have to choose whether we will believe. And that's the invitation that God has for us tonight. Will you believe? Now, earlier I told the story about how for many years I walked around believing that I was ugly and not worth loving. Even though I had started following Jesus when I was in high school, it took me a long time to accept that God had made me, and because he had made me, I have worth and I have value. For a long time, I just always thought of myself as a mistake, as a mess up. And God helped me to see that no, I wasn't a mistake, that I was planned with a purpose. Now in Psalm 139, it says that we are wonderfully made. Now, all of God's works are wonderful. I believe that. And because I'm one of his works, that means I'm wonderful too. But even though it's, I could read it plainly in the Bible, I realized that it's something I still had to choose to believe. And that's what I did. Every single time, every single day that the words came to my mind, I am ugly, I had to literally tell myself to stop that message and to play the real, the true message, I am wonderfully made. And I had to do this over and over again 
until the real message took root deep within my heart. And then I began to believe the truth of who I am because of the fact that God made me. I am beautiful and I am worth loving. And I know that to be true because of the big idea that we've been talking about tonight. Jesus came into the world in a humble, ordinary way and chose to announce his coming to humble, ordinary people to show us that he chooses us. We are important. We are valuable. We are worth loving. I wanted to end with a story. On Saturday night, I went to a family Christmas party. And at this party, each of the kids received a present from a secret Santa. As I watched the kids open their presents, I was really struck by what a gift is. Now, all of the kids were getting gifts, but none of the kids were getting gifts because of anything that they had done. None of them had gone to the store to look and to select a gift, and none of them had gone to work to earn the money in order to buy a gift to give one. There was nothing, absolutely nothing, that they had done that resulted in them being able to earn these gifts. They were getting gifts simply because their parents had decided that they wanted to give their kids, these kids, amazing gifts. Now, this is the truth about Jesus. God decided that he just wanted to give us amazing gift, an amazing gift, one that's so incredible that it's the best gift that we could possibly ever get. And it wasn't because of anything that we had ever done. Now, my kids ended up getting these amazing gifts, a huge bear and a huge train set. Now, even though they didn't do anything to deserve it, they did not think twice about accepting this gift. <laughs> In fact, my son took the train set by the handle, was ready to walk out the door and take it home. Now, what about us? The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God so loved us that he gave us the greatest gift of all. The birth of Jesus proves his love and our value. So what will we choose? Will we choose to believe that Jesus is the Savior for us? And will we choose to believe what he says about us? Because if we do, like the shepherds, our lives will be changed. And God will use us to change the lives of others. And I want to end with just two questions for you to think about. What are truths about God that you need to accept and believe? What are truths about you that you need to accept and believe? Now I'm going to pray, and after that, we're going to end our service uh, by candlelight. So let's pray. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift that you have given us that we haven't earned in any way. Thank you that you see us. You see us and you know us completely inside and out. You know all of our good and you know all of our weaknesses and all of our flaws. And you accept us. You choose us. You love us. Thank you, God. Thank you for that we have value and worth because of how you see us. Because of you, God, we have value and worth. I just pray that tonight you will help us to accept you, to accept and receive this message, to accept the gift that you have given us, and to accept the life of hope, joy, and peace that you have for us. And now we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this time, we're going to be closing our Christmas Eve service with the lighting of candles. Now this year, as you've already noticed, we're starting a new tradition, and that tradition is to use battery-operated candles for the safety of everyone. So what we're going to do now is we're going to form a circle, and then we're going to light our candles. And after all the candles are lit, I'm just going to say a few words, and then we're going to sing Silent Night. Then I'll say a prayer, and then that will be the end of our service. As you leave, please turn off your candles and leave them outside at the tables. So right now, let's stand up together and form a circle.
verse for all of them? Just one verse. Can we put it up? Yeah. Oh. Does anybody need a candle that doesn't have a candle? If you do, please come on up. I can give you one. Anybody? Everyone have a candle? Drew, you need a candle? Candle lighting is a Christmas Eve tradition that helps us remember that when Jesus came into the world, he brought light into the darkness. For the shepherds who were watching their sheep in the deep darkness of night, the angel came and brought great light with the news of the birth of Jesus. Now, 2018 may have been a year of darkness for you. I know it's been a hard year in the life of our church. But the birth of Jesus is the birth of hope. He is our savior from sin, brokenness, hopelessness, and despair. At Christmas, we remember and celebrate Jesus. We celebrate that in him is life, and that life is the light for all people. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never, never, ever, ever put it out. And all of this began one silent, holy night. Let's sing together. us life and we pray that as we leave here tonight we will carry this light with us in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas Merry everyone Christmas.